Hebrews 4.16 tell, tells us to come boldly to the throne of grace. These things are gone. A lot of people just got to... Miracles are something that take place at God's appointed time. Special show, and um, we're going to be talking about how to overcome addiction. I'm going to get Pastor Roy Hayes' a, um, opinion about the addiction. I'm going to get Brother Dean opinion about addictions and um, we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. what, are your, what is your take on what the addiction is? Well, by being a pastor, I know that the Word of God has the power in itself to cause mm -hmm. itself to come to pass. Um, and uh, all the answers that we need is in the Word of God. Uh, right. uh, I want to read a couple of scriptures to start off with because, again, it's the Word of God that's going to set us free. Mm -hmm. And it's the word of God that will keep you free. Right. Uh, this is in James chapter 1, and mm -hmm. I want to start reading at verse 12. It says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, mm -hmm. for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, mm -hmm. which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Mm -hmm. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desires, or you can say thoughts, was conceived, it gives birth to sin. Mm -hmm. And sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. What it's actually saying is that you are what you think about all day long. Mm -hmm. uh, Proverbs 23, 7 tells us that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to read one more scripture real quick. I, I know we don't, <laughs> uh, we don't have much time here, mm -hmm. but this is in Matthew 12, 33. Mm -hmm. I want you to go there real, real quickly with me. Again, I'm a stickler for the word of God. I know the word of God will set you free mm -hmm. if you continue in it. Yes. Uh, Matthew 12, 35 says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bring forth good things. Mm -hmm. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. So what is manifesting on the outside of your life actually comes from your heart. I know a lot of people will put the blame on somebody else or the devil. Mm -hmm. But actually, what you think about all day long makes up your character. Oh, a thought is a seed. Mm -hmm. And the uh, law of Genesis says, everything produces after its own kind. Mm -hmm. So what you think about will manifest on the outside of you in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of times, especially dealing with uh, addictions. Uh, a lot of people trying to fight something that is on the outside of them all the time, not mm -hmm. knowing that they are harboring the cause of the addiction in their heart because this is their makeup. This is their attitude. This is how they think. Mm -hmm. If they learn according to what the Word of God says, if we would cast down imagination and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. Think on those things that are true. Think on something totally different than drugs or cigarettes okay. or pornography. Mm -hmm. uh, think about the good things that you have strength to say no to those things. Right. And if you continue to think along those lines, it will become your character. It will give you strength. You become what you think. You become what you think. Right, brother. Amen. Now, Brother Dean, uh, I wanted to get your take on addiction. What is an addiction? Your definition of addiction. Well, I'd like to expand on what Pastor Roy just said um, and what you just said, too, is uh, you really do. What you manifest internally will become external. Mm -hmm. It's uh, extremely important, folks. We're in an addictive society um, in a lot of ways. Um, in fact, a lot of times our, we're marketed to our addictions. Right. Um, a lot of our products are geared towards uh, trigger effects that uh, make us think about it. And, and as Pastor Roy and yourself said, it's very important, folks, to think that uh, what you internalize will externalize, and that goes so true, not only for yourself, but your people you surround yourself with, or your, whether it be your children, 
or other in, young influences. Um, and we are addictive in a sense where it comes to, say, pornography or violence or sex, but uh, addictions can range a whole gamut of things. Mm -hmm. like, uh, you can be have an addictive personality. You can be addicted to other people. You can be addicted to uh, negative things. You can be addicted to violence. You can be addicted to so many things. And yeah. as Pastor Roy and yourself said, what you manifest internally will become that and if if you and it sounds so easy sometimes folks but positive thinking and if you give someone a thousand positive options the negative options will wash away mm -hmm. and addictions <laughs> yeah. tend to fill voids we yeah. need to, i need to understand mm -hmm. what are we filling or were we constantly just refilling it with dirt and digging itself out is it something that we and we need to look at like you said externally we try to find the flaws but internally it's what's bringing those flaws out mm -hmm. Okay. So you need to internalize and find out <coughs> what is truly the trigger effects that is making right. you geared towards that addiction. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good. good. Very, very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. And um, the Bible calls it a besetting sin. Uh, Hebrews 12, 1, it says, lay aside every weight and sin which so easily besets you. A besetting, is, besetting sin is something that sets you back from doing the will of God or walking in God's ways. And um, also, we want to touch on my second question or my second statement you know before before you get to that uh second uh question let me mm -hmm. let me just share this um <clears throat> because of uh, uh, dealing with people with uh these deficiencies mm -hmm. uh either drugs or uh, alcohol or pornography or other things mm -hmm. um they do some shameful things because mm -hmm. of these uh addictions and they feel that they are unworthy right and if and even when they go to church or pray to god they feel that god is not listening to them that he doesn't love them anymore because of the sin that's in their lives. Mm -hmm. Well, the Bible tells us that nothing can separate you from the, from the love of God. Amen. Um, uh, Hebrews 4, 16 tell, tells us to come boldly to the throne, throne of grace. grace that we might receive help and grace and mercy in the mm -hmm. time of need. You know, we all need that mercy because we, we make mistakes. I mean, we, I mean, we're going to say that for the end. That's we're going to say that for the end. That's, that's a good for the end. Okay. Yeah, we're going right. to get a solution to the end. We want to touch on the problem okay. first, and then we're going to get to the end. Okay. So don't turn the channel. Don't turn the DVD off yet. <laughs> I know you know we're going to um, give you the solution. We're going to give you the problem first. It's hard right. not to be passionate about it. Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah. We're going to give you the good news at the end. So. Okay. Yeah, we wanted to talk about now... Uh, the seven major addictions. So, you know, I prayed to God and I asked him, what are the seven major addictions? What are the ones that's overwhelming everyone? And he gave me, first of all, before I say these, I don't want you to know that I'm not trying to condemn you or trying to make you feel bad about it. But uh, just stay here and listen to what we have to say. We're going to help you overcome the addiction that you're struggling with. And the seven major addictions, when I asked the Lord what were they, he told me uh, alcohol, drugs, whether marijuana or crack, cocaine. Um, number three was cigarettes. Four, pornography. Five, television. <laughs> uh, six, overeating, gluttony. <clears throat> and seven, lust of the eyes. So I'm going to run that back to you. The seven major addictions that <clears throat> we struggle with. Alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, pornography, television, overeating or gluttony, uh, and, and the lust of the eyes. We're not going to pinpoint and point out each one of these <clears throat> addictions. We're going to talk about them in general, and we're going to generalize it. And um, we're going to go into asking Pastor Roy Hayes and Brother Dean, what triggers a personal addiction? What, what makes a person want to yield to their addiction? So could you answer that? I, it, you know, <clears throat> Dean alluded to it earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. th there's a void there. A void. There's mm -hmm. a void there. Uh, people dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. um, uh, again, going back to the Word of God, um, if God is first, Jesus is first, if the, if the Word is first, it, it brings completion. We mm -hmm. are complete in Him. And, and uh, the people that are uh, even just attempting to uh, uh, take drugs or get involved in drugs, they were looking for something. They're looking, for, you know, they call it high. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they call it a high. Actually, mm -hmm. actually, what they're looking for, they're looking for Jesus, but they don't know it. Right. Because Jesus brings the peace. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he is the Prince of Peace. He, he brings the joy. He brings the stability. He, bring, he brings the strength. Right. Uh, he brings the creativity. Uh, and that's what they're looking for. Right. And so if, if they don't receive Jesus, if they're not listening 
to preachers or if they're not reading their Bible, if they're not going to church, they're not receiving Jesus. Right. They're receiving other things of the world. Uh, um, uh, you, you have a, the, the, the uh, video. Uh, video games. Not, actually, not the games. Uh, the music videos and, uh -huh, and, okay. and, and the, uh, you have the gangster rap, you, you have all of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, just what we said earlier is that what you look at, you know, the, the Bible talks about the in 2 Corinthians 3, 3, 18 says that with unveiled face, we behold mm -hmm. in the mirror the glory of the Lord yeah. and that we're being transformed into that same image. image. From glory to glory. glory yeah. So, in other words, it's saying you're gonna become what you look at. Mm -hmm. That's what it's saying. If you focus on something long enough, it be, it will become your makeup. Right back to the thinking again. Right. It becomes your makeup. makeup. That's that's what comes. That's what comes out. So they're looking for something, and if if they're if they're not looking, keeping their eyes on Jesus, they're gonna look at something else, and right. that's what happens. Feel the void. Yeah, to feel that it's void. All about feeling the void. Yeah. I mean, it's about taking away the focus from positive uh, things, too. <clears throat> you mentioned that, uh, in fact, my own, I can relate this in my own personal story. I can remember for years and years I smoked marijuana, mm -hmm. and I did it more or less the way at first it was, quote, to get high. And it's ironic, though, because the higher you get, the lower you feel. Mm -hmm. And that was the problem. And, and, and oftentimes afterwards, the amount of regret you had when you did drugs was overwhelming. And I think in a lot of ways, sometimes people tend to do alcohol and drugs and abusive things and almost in a way to self-punish themselves, to mm -hmm. actually to feel like they're, you know, whether it be a, a situation, whether it be family, whether it be their own lifestyle, whether it be um, something that they can't control or perhaps they're not putting effort towards controlling, they tend to be in that out of control situation. And by doing so, oftentimes people punish themselves by either escapism, by drinking, by drugs, by, by voyeurism, whether, whether it be pornography, other ways. But uh, oftentimes, folks, it's, it comes down to simply if we keep focus, as you say, whether it be on Jesus, a, a positive foundation, your walls won't be shaky. Your walls won't be, you know, your walls will be there for shelter, not to hinder yourself, but exactly. to actually provide shelter and the reasons why, and, a, and a, st a stability. And when there is no stability or foundation, you tend to look for things that aren't positive, which tends to, to snowball. And that's what happens. And you're filling that void. And in some ways, you're punishing yourself by not doing the positive thing. And it's a lot easier not to do it than it is to do it. Right. Very well put. Appreciate it. And um, my take on it was um, anger. I kind of thought that anger triggers uh, addictions or you lead to addictions or you yield into addictions. I know at times in the past, you know, I get real angry about something and I look, I look for something to stimulate my mind at the time or to calm me down. And um, <clears throat> whether it was drinking, you know, I won't go into details what it was, but I would yield to the addiction and it'll calm my nerves for a minute, as you said. And then, just like Tylenol, temporary relief, <laughs> it comes back and then you got to keep filling that void. And um, also, I wanted to also talk about another trigger, you know, that triggers uh, addictions, um, tragedy. You know, I, I've known some people that went through tragedy, they lost a son, um, lost a loved one, and then they go back to the addiction. How do you deal, a person that, that, that been through a tragedy of losing a loved one, you know, how do you how do they overcome that? You know, um, going back to the word again, mm -hmm. um, the Bible says that God is near to those who have a broken heart. Right. Um, but He needs to um, He needs you to allow Him to come into your life. Right. Um, if if you don't know that God is your shelter, right. the Scripture tells us that He is our refuge in our fortress and he is a strong tower. Mm -hmm. uh, it's gonna take faith to believe that. Uh, right. Isaiah 7, 9 says that, uh, if you don't believe me, I can't help you. Yeah. Uh, there's another translation that says that, if you don't believe me, you don't have a, a leg to stand on. Right. Um, tragedy can, can happen to anybody. Uh, and w when, that, when that happens, if, if they've been hooked into the vine right. because we are the branch and, and he's the vine. We draw our sustenance from him. We draw right. our strength from him. The scripture tells us that Jesus has been made unto us wisdom, mm -hmm. righteousness, yeah. sanctification, and re redemption. Yeah. 
and that we are complete in him. Amen. And he's our strength. Yeah. Uh, when we look to him by faith, the Holy Spirit will rise up within us and give us the strength to go on mm -hmm. through the tough times. Exactly. Yeah, basically speaking of tragedy, that, that's what basically the movie was about. Um, Eddie, the guy Eddie Moe, he wasn't saved, and uh, <clears throat> he didn't know nothing about Jesus. And um, he had tragedy. He lost his son, and um, he felt unworthy. And um, in like manner, I know some people that were saved that went through a tra tragedy of losing their loved one, and they didn't know how to come back to Jesus. So I want you to encourage someone that once was saved, well, once was close to the Lord, but had a tragedy and drew back from God, mm -hmm. how, would, how would you talk to them? That's what, that's what I really meant to say the first time. But how would you talk to them in getting back close to Jesus? How well, would you approach them? Well, uh, the scripture tells us that draw near to God mm -hmm. and he'll draw near to you. Uh, you know, what that means is that when, you, when you're drawing near to God, that means that you're drawing away from something right. and you're drawing to Him. And His power is manifested when you draw close to Him because you're leaving some things behind. You know, uh, we, the Bible tells us that we need to reckon ourselves dead. Right. And I've, uh, a, a lot of people, um, they're wondering where the power is. Right. Um, um, because we know that we have God on the inside of us, the all, Almighty God, the same power that that raised Jesus from the dead, mm -hmm. and we we wonder where where the power is. Well, the power is there; it didn't leave. What happened? We left God, right. and when we draw away from God, uh, then we draw away from that power because God is not going to push Himself on on anyone. Uh, the person that needs to uh, get back to God to take it one step at a time. Uh -huh. There's no rush. Knowing that right. God loves you, He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God is always there. But uh, He's not going to force Himself on you. You have to be willing. Right. He said, whosoever will. And as soon as you open your heart up to Him, it's just like uh, the, the prodigal son mm -hmm. uh, when he... Uh, went out and spent his, his inheritance and right. he was in the uh, pig pen to make a long story short, he realized uh, how sinful he was and he decided, well, uh, he came to him, his senses. He said, I'm going back home. Right. And then when he came back home, the father saw him in a distance. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says that the father ran to him mm -hmm. and put his arms around him. Yeah. And even though he spent all his inheritance, Welcome you know, back. how good God is, whatever you lost, God will replace that and then some. Right. And that's what happened to the uh, prodigal, prodigal son. son yeah. He spent it all. And, and a lot of people, they get, get, feel guilty because they've lost so much, not knowing that God has much more. Yeah. And God is, God is always giving if we are open to him. Right. So mourning, how does God feel about someone mourning? I never lost a loved one, so I, I really don't, I never had that experience. But um, how does he feel about someone mourning or how, is it a lack of faith or? Well, you know, Jesus cried. Mm -hmm. Remember um, when Lazarus? Right. Yeah, well, Jesus cried. It's okay to cry. Uh, crying is, a, uh, is healing. There's healing in crying. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a, a, a moment, a time in mourning, and there's a time to turn it loose. Uh, right. Even If you notice, even the animal world, mm -hmm. if, a, if a mother lose a, a, a child a, a, at birth, they're mm -hmm. going, going to mourning. So it's a natural thing. Uh, but what you need, uh, what we need to understand is there's a, there's something else they call grieving. Right. Mourning is a natural thing, but grieving is not a natural thing. That's the, that's a person that's always hanging on to that, that feeling for months and years. And, and I've, I've, I've seen people that have uh, lost a loved one and every year at that, that time, that anniversary, they right. get down in the dumps. The memory. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, that's not God. That is, that's a, a, a avenue for the devil to come in to steal, kill and to destroy. Right. We give them place. You know, the Bible also tells us, forget the things that are behind and keep, and keep moving on. Yeah. Now, of course, we, we remember our loved ones, but not to the point where is we talked about, you talked about Hebrews 12, 1. Right. Laying aside every weight, weight. and mm -hmm. the sin that so easily beset us, that could be one of the weights in your life that could hold you back right. because the devil can take advantage of that area in your life. 
Amen. You take one, brother. Uh, he, he, Pastor William, uh, really brings up a lot of good points. Uh, there's a quote that I've kept throughout my life uh, that I've carried with me. Uh, the greatness comes not when things always go good for you, but the greatness comes when you take some knocks, some disappointments, when sadness comes. Because only when you've been in the high, deepest valley will you ever know what it's to be on the highest mountain. Yeah. Um, tragedy unifies us sometimes. We saw after September 11th, we saw all of us doing things we normally wouldn't do. We let mm -hmm. people in. We waved at people. We actually <laughs> acknowledged people. Yeah. And we, we, <laughs> we asked. We and, and then as soon as the bumper stickers started to fade and the flags started to get tattered, we started to lose that unification that we had. Yeah. And unfortunately, sometimes it takes tragedy to unify us, but also, too, it's yet again, you mentioned a very good point when it comes to accepting of Jesus and God. To, it also goes into the rehabilitation of someone that has addictions. You see that often with people going through rehab, rehab after rehab after rehab, mm -hmm. and it's not until you actually accept yourself. And you, you can, I've often said, until you're able to help yourself, you, cannot ha you can have a thousand people wishing to help you. Mm -hmm. But until you accept mm -hmm. your, your, your faith and you accept Jesus and you accept the fact that this is taking control of you mm -hmm. and you give yourself to that, acknowledge, that, it. And mm -hmm. acknowledge it. And, and that's yeah. sometimes the hardest part is the, your, the ability just to simply say, I have need I need help problem, mm. right. I yes. have a problem right. and and our, will there be an ego or will there be just not a lack of self-awareness I mm -hmm. mean we can have that we can have people all in your life telling you this is destroying you this is ruining you but until you accept that and just much like accepting Jesus until you accept that you can go through every rehabilitation there is in the world but until you are able to open your heart to it you mm -hmm. will not see with the clarity that you need amen mm -hmm. that's good. great that's good you know, that's, that's, that's true I mean you can't change what you don't acknowledge you know you cannot change what you don't acknowledge. You have to acknowledge that you have a problem, mm -hmm. and you have to do something about it, and you go from there. All right, we're down to the last question. How do we overcome addiction? Uh, <clears throat> Pastor, do you want to touch on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I have got my, have my scriptures again. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to try to read through them real quick because I know we don't have much time. Uh, yeah. Ten minutes worth, uh, seven minutes, yeah. We seven good. minutes. Okay. Because I know my brother Dean has something, some good to say. Yeah. You got also, seven, seven okay, minutes. real quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, I, I refer you back to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, it is, uh, uh, Romans one sixteen said, it is the power of God. Gospel is the power of God unto salvation. salvation yeah. So, uh, salvation means much more than getting to heaven. It means uh, preservation, uh, 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 mm -hmm. uh, safety, he uh, healing, and and strengthen all that. So sure. anyway, uh, Isaiah 55, 11, uh, we, uh, the Bible, also, Bible tells us that in Matthew 4, 4, that we live by every word. So Isaiah 55, 11 says that, and I'm going to read the message, and it's because it really sounds really good. I, I really love this, mm -hmm. this translation here. It says, so will the words that come out of my mouth not come back to me empty-handed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they will do the work I sent them to do. That's right. They will complete the assignment I gave them. Yes, right. Um, hearing the word of God on authority, who you are in Jesus Christ, what you have, what you can do in Jesus Christ, and your redemption, that's the word of God. That sets you free. Hearing scriptures like, uh, God has delivered me from the powers of darkness and have translated me into the kingdom mm -hmm. of his dear son. I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Well, the drugs and all the other things that we're talking about, that's the curse of the law. I've been redeemed that. So that, that word, when you continue to heal that word, that word will not return to God void. It will change you if you continue to hear the word over and over again. Mm -hmm. Scripture also tells us that if we continue in the word, then you are my disciples, disciples indeed, and then you would know the truth, and the truth, and the truth will set and you free. Now, it, mm -hmm. now listen, you have to understand, it didn't say the truth will set you free. It said the, truth, it, it said the truth that you know. Right. That's a person that has continued in the word of God mm -hmm. day in and day mm -hmm. out. They will get to get a revelation of God's word. Also, also in Proverbs 4.20, I know I'm moving a little quickly here now. <laughs> Don't have much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My son, give attention to my words. Amen. Incline yeah. your ear unto my saying. Same. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst, midst of, of thine heart. heart, for they are life unto those, those that, that find them, them and health, health to all, all their flesh. flesh. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. And also, I, I really love this. This, yeah. <laughs> now, this, is, this is another scripture that I really love. Mm -hmm. It's Jeremiah 23. 29. It says, not my word like a fire, oh, says yeah. the Lord. And it's like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. Well, 
Well, the, the, the rocks you're talking about, it's the hard places in your life that you can't get over, right. can't, can't, can't get the breakthrough. It's the addiction. It's the thing that you're dealing with. That's right. the hard place. And mm -hmm. the, the Word of God is like a hammer. Mm -hmm. And every time you hear the Word of God, that hammer goes to work on that hard place. Bow, it hits. And a ch it chips off. Hit, mm -hmm. keep hitting. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people think that it's, once they come to church, they're going to get set free just like that. Well, yeah. see, that's a quick fix. That's not God. Mm -hmm. Now, God will, will, will wrought a miracle. When he wrought a miracle, that means he had to get things back in order. Mm -hmm. But that's not God's way of doing Plan things. Him. His way of doing things, uh, the blade, the ear, then the full corn in the ear. That's the word of God working in your life day in and, and day, day out. Uh -huh. So every time you hear the word of God concerning that area, uh, any area of your life, that, that hammer, that word goes to work on that hard place and he keeps Ding. hitting it. Yeah. And just imagine, what most people do, they give up too quick. They'll, they'll come to church and, and they say they're still dealing with the same problem, but they don't realize the word is still working. Right. It's still working. So it's, you're chipping at that, that rock and you still have the rock there, but pieces are flying off. It. And then all of a sudden you, you stay with the word long enough and one time you come and hear the word concern that situation, that hammer hit it Boom. one time and obliterate that hard place because it has been hitting successionally. Mm -hmm on a consistent basis right. of um, actually forming little cracks in that right. rocks. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Word is doing in right. people's lives when they hear it. The Word of God, the same Word that sets you free is the same Word that will keep you free. You have to Amen. continue in it. Don't give up. Continue. Yep. And that hard place happens to be the heart. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yes. And then, yes. real briefly, I, I'd like to expand, and, and briefly expand on what he was saying. It really, it's almost a physical transformation too. I remember when I accepted Jesus in my life, I felt literally a physical transformation. My heart, my chest expanded. I felt like I'd actually breathe better. Whoa, I mean, it was a physical, it was Seriously. a physical moment, and mm -hmm. I had, and I it had been in there for so long, but it was just captured by so much of the outside. Right. Um, just, I guess, uh, just I guess things that just distracted me from my true purpose. Right. Um, just very briefly, though, when it comes to addictions, I, I implore you at home to please do not think that you've reached the very bottom. Oftentimes you hear the thing, I've hit rock bottom so many times, I'm looking up. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a point to where you can look back and understand why you've gone through that. In fact, some of the things I've said in my own show, The Tampa Grapevine, you may not understand why you're going through it at this particular moment. You may not understand the tragedy or what is absolutely consuming your very soul, but it may lead you on a path of righteousness or a path of, it'll, it'll change you to a sense where if you're not open to the message, you're not open to what you're being taught at that time, whether it be a hard lesson of life or whether it be a positive lesson, unless you're aware of it and open to that, folks, you will, you will not take the right path. And what happens today, you may not understand it, but from years from now, you look back on it and you'll realize, I took that path and it may not have been a quick fix, but it led me to the path where I am today. And that is what you need to do, is to be determined, focused, and stay on that path. Mm -hmm. And we all have our access roads, folks. We all have our, and it's about environment. If you have to change mm -hmm. your environment, change your environment, because mm -hmm. oftentimes we are products of our environment. Mm -hmm. And don't let your environment be a product of you. <laughs> Amen. In my conclusion, I want to leave it with Pastor Roy Hayes. Um, could you tell the viewers that's watching how to receive Christ? into their life. The, the, Bible, the, the Word of God says that, how much God loves us, and uh, this is how much God loved us, that He gave His Son, His one and only Son, so that no one need be destroyed. Anyone can have a whole and lasting life in Jesus Christ. You know, God didn't send Jesus down here on this earth to point an accusing finger, telling the world how bad it was. No, he came to put the world right again. Anyone who trusts in him is acquitted. Anyone who refused to trust in him has long since been under the death sentence without knowing it. And why? Because that person's failure to believe in the one of a kind, Son of God, when introduced to him. We want to introduce Jesus to you at this time. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Just as simple as that. So I want you to repeat this prayer after us. 
Say, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I believe. I believe. That Jesus. That Jesus. Is your son. Is your son. He died on the cross. He died on the cross. For my sins. For my sins. And he rose the third day. And he rose the third day. And I want him. And I want him. Jesus. Jesus. To be. To be. The Lord of my the life. Lord of my life. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. That I am. That I am. Saved. Saved. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.